I'm just messing with you. Skatoosh, Joey Moss with Bad Boy Gaming. Are you guys and girls ready? We're going to bring some new heat to the street of Chaldeem. That's right. This cold home is home to a lot of angels and warriors and all types of just powerful, maybe predator type just nuttiness, in fact. Whoa, let's not get carried away, maybe. But we have some cards that just are uh, over the top. And uh, <laughs> you, you would never see this kind of stuff printed on creatures in the early days of magic, let me tell you. So let's get into it. And uh, runes. We're going to talk about runes. What the heck is a rune? Well, we don't know for certain yet, but I think I got it down. And if I'm wrong, no, nah, I'm not going to be wrong. I bet I'm right on this. It's all speculation. It's all like possible, you know, this could be that, whatever. Let's do this. Okay, Dragon Kin Berserker. Are oh, you berserker? That's all I got. All right, two drop. Remember, these are leaks, so the quality is not going to be amazing. I'm getting these before the actual spoilers, okay? So do keep that in mind. This thing's crazy. Two drop, human berserker. It's a 2-2 two -two with first strike. Already, that's not too bad, okay? We have two twos with haste and some other abilities and all types of crazy stuff, okay? So sorry, a nice little bear. Boast, that's right. Boast is going to be a thing in Chaldeem. Boast abilities you activate cost one less to activate for each dragon you control. Okay. Boast, you pay four colorless, one red mana. Create a 5-5 five five red dragon creature token with flying. Huh? You can do that anytime you want. Not anytime. Activate this ability only if this creature attacked this turn and only once each turn. Okay. Well, forgive me. You can only do it the one time, okay? Each turn. And you also have to attack with it. Activate ability only if this creature attacked this turn and only once each turn. It doesn't say like at sorcery speed or anything like that. So if I attack with this, at that point, once it's declared as attacker, and then it goes on to the next part of that phase, would it, or the next part of that combat phase, couldn't I do it right then and there? I believe so. Um, but you pay five, create a five, five red dragon creature token with flying. That my friends is terrifying. Okay. The fact that you can just boast, boom. Now you got a freaking huge five, five creature flyer dragon out on the field. This thing is like uh, a two for one kind of deal. Almost, you know, you got two sweet, like cards kind of built into one. You got a five, five dragon with flying. And you also have Dragon Skin Berserker, which is a two, a two drop first strike. So uh, how about that, the second ability? After first strike, we have boast abilities. You activate cost one less to activate for each dragon you control. I don't know that that's going to be, I don't know that that's going to be a huge factor. I mean, plus, how many dragons do you actually get out of the battlefield? The majority of dragons are a pretty steep price. At least the ones we are going to see, more than likely, in standard right now. You know, you branch out to Pioneer, Modern, you know, Commander. You can find dragons. Um, I think there's a two drop, a few two drop dragons, you know, and stuff like that. A bunch of three drops. I'm not sure if there's any one drop dragons. There may be. Okay. But regardless, let's just say for standard purposes, you're going to have bigger dragon creatures. If we can get a three drop dragon creature, I would be happy. And I would also not be surprised if we get one in Chaldeem. Um, But yeah, that boast, I'm not sure about the reduction thing really mattering a whole lot. But, I mean, it would cheapen some stuff, you know. And there are cards out there that can make your Berserker unblockable, you know, which would play nice, you know. And I've talked about her before. It's a card that doesn't see a heck ton of play. You only pay one, and uh, it ends up making a target creature with power two or less unblockable for that turn, which is sweet. And you can do that to as many creatures as you want every time you pay one. So, all right, all that being said, this seems like a lot of fun. Again, yeah, it dies to shock, dies to removal, whatever. But um, getting out of big friggin' Dragon Man, I like that. I activate this ability only if this creature attacked this turn and only once each turn. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, I heard, I did hear some people talking about, I don't know if they read the fine text here, but they um, they didn't realize that you can only do it like once. Now, if you had multiples out, if you had a couple of these Dragonkin Berserkers, you could do it on each uh, card's boast ability. So then you can do multiples, you know, it could be, you could do two if you had two out and so on and so forth. 
But really interesting card. That being said, uh, let's uh, move forward. Resplendent Marshall. The, the card I keep thinking of is, is Resplendent Angel in past spoiler videos. But anyway, three drop. We It seems like White got a lot of three drops um, lately, especially in this video. Angel Warrior. And White is back. I'm telling you, White is going to be more powerful than ever. Okay. Um, whoa. Flying when Resplendent Marshall enters the battlefield or dies, you may exile another creature card from your graveyard. Notice those words. Enters the battlefield or dies. Okay. You may exile, and that's kind of interesting. They put the word die on the card. You may exile another creature card from your graveyard. When you do, put a plus one, plus one counter on each creature you control other than Resplendent Marshal that shares a creature type with the exiled card. So odds are the best, I think the best place for this, at least in standard, would be in warrior builds. This thing would just excel in warrior builds. Be aggressive, be fast, be... be be, be very mean, be menacing, be all those things warriors do, you know, be hasty, be strong, get bigger, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and I think this would fit in really nice in a warrior build. So you're looking at probably red, white. I'm not sure how many warriors we got in black and whatnot, but at least red, white, um, I think this would be nice. Because um, the plus one, plus one counter on each creature you control, the only downside is, Marshall doesn't get it, and it's only for the warriors, you know. So you'd have to exile. There has to be a warrior already in your graveyard, and then you would exile it when it enters the battlefield. You get a plus one, plus one counters. But then if this thing were to die, you could do the same thing as long as there's another warrior in your battlefield uh, or in your graveyard. Pretty certain. May exile another creature card from your graveyard. Enters the battlefield or dies. Yeah, so you can technically splash uh, plus one, plus one counters twice <coughs> throughout this pretty things uh you know duration but also it says when it enters the battlefield there's a lot of cards that you can you know basically bounce the creature exile it and then put it back in the play boom you know hits the field again you can do it again so i'm not sure if there's any warrior synergy there with that ability because that'd be sweet but we do have cards that already do that and they are in standard so that's pretty legit just something else to think about uh bouncing it this seems like a fun card, Mythic-wise. I don't know if it deserved Mythic, but maybe like during test play or something, they determined um, it can be uh, extremely powerful and aggressive, you know. Um, and uh, yeah, those plus one, plus one counters can get out of control pretty quick, especially with other cards that trigger off and give plus one, plus one counters, you know, and all, all, all sorts of stuff. So I think Resplendent Marshall is a pretty fair card. Moving forward, baby. S pardon the quality. Sigrid, God Favored, is a three-drop. Again, legendary creature, human warrior. This one's interesting. One, it's got flash, which is already cool. It also has first strike, which is also pretty slick. I'd love to see, like, this be a 4-2 first strike. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That'd be nuts. Uh, first strike, protection from God creatures. I think that this is the first time we've ever seen the text protection from God creatures on a card. That's pretty legit. Bro, if you have protect if you're protected from gods, what does that make you? You know what I'm saying? Like what? Okay. That makes you uh Sigrid. That's what it makes you. When Sigrid God favored enters the battlefield, exile up to one target attacking or blocking creature until Sigrid leaves the battlefield. Never alone, never afraid. I like that. So that's a powerful ability though, because when it enters the battlefield, um, enters the battlefield, exile up to one target attacking or blocking creature. And so, so you have to flash that in at the actual right time. You know, you can't just flash it in and then you do that. It doesn't work that way. Um, but, um, yeah, just at any time you have to flash it during the attack thing. So, um, exit up to one target attacking or blocking creature. So if maybe you're on defense, this, I think would be great for defense. Boom. That card gets exiled. Oh, yeah. You know, um, until this thing leaves the battlefield. So pretty cool. Another built-in, like, kind of, you know, t temporary removal. Because, I mean, this thing dies, then, you know, well, they're going to get their creature back and hits the field again, you know. Um, but I think that's pretty legit, man. Exile up to one target attacking or blocking creature. So, yeah, that works both ways. If they're, they're swinging on you, whatever. If um, they're blocking one of your guys, nope, sorry, you're not going to block. Damage is going to get through, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I think that's pretty powerful, man. We're going to see just how powerful this thing is. 
I almost feel like this could have been the mythic over the other card, but maybe, I, I got to be wrong about that. But this dude's got protection from gods. This is going to see play. Um, yeah, throw it in your warrior deck. The really cool thing, scary thing, is it is a human. And humans do like, uh, humans have a lot of power. The, um, if you notice lately, they don't, have, they don't really print a whole lot of powerful human cards. Just because humans are always already so powerful, especially in other formats. But really, really interesting card nonetheless. I like it a lot. Then we have Rune Forge Champion. Let's talk about runes. Are you ready? So this is a three drop Dwarf Warrior. Remember, Dwarf Warrior is going to be something. When Rune Forge Champion enters the battlefield, you may search your library and or graveyard for a rune card. What the heck is a rune? Reveal it and put it into your hand. If you search your library this way, shuffle it. You may pay one colorless rather than pay the mana cost for ruin spells you cast. You may pay one rather than pay the mana cost for rune spells you cast. That, okay, so what's the steepest rune spell going to be? What, three? Four? I can't imagine it being higher than four. Maybe two? Three? Now, what is a ruin? We don't really know. Okay, let me just show you a few cards from back in the day. You know, this is not the original Prince of These, but Rune of Protection Blue. Rune of Protection Artifacts. Rune of Protection Red. Prevent all damage to you from an artifact source. Or from a red source. Or from a... Uh, from, from a blue source, or green, or black, you know, or even white itself, whatever. Um, yeah, white's right there. Okay. Um, but Runeforge Champion, what is a ruin? In my uh, my crazy thoughts, and I'd like to hear yours, what you actually think a ruin's going to be, but my belief, I think a ruin will be an enchantment... Or equipment? You know, something like that. So what I'm saying is um, basically... It's going to be an enchantment, like you can enchant an equipment, maybe. Enchant an artifact or something like that, okay? But it's going to be an enchantment. Instead of an enchantment aura, it'll be like an enchantment equipment kind of thing. Maybe you can equip, uh, uh, like, uh, let's say you were to equip um, any equipment card you have out with your ruin. Okay, so you'd be equipping, you're like, wait, that's a lot for this one. Hear me out, though. It's going to provide some other perk, maybe a protection or something like that. But let's say your creature were to die that has this equipment, your Embercleave, you know, that you enchanted now with this ruin, okay? It's not an aura, okay? We're, it's going to be like an equipment enchantment or something, you know, so that way, uh, or an artifact enchantment. It's, I know it sounds kind of crazy. So that way, the artifact or the enchantment equipment, you know, artifact, if your creature were to die, you're not just going to lose that aura, you know, like how an aura normally works. If your creature dies, well, the aura goes away too. No, this time, um, your Embercleave would move over to the side. And also, so would your Ruin, you know, where you could play it again. Makes sense? Kind of? Maybe? And maybe the equip cost is the same as the casting cost. So then you may pay one rather than pay the mana cost for rune spells you cast. But then it'd already be casted. Not sure how exactly that would all work. But I do think it's going to be something along those lines. Like an, aura, an, enchantment, an enchantment equipment kind of thing. You know, Makes sense to me. Let me hear what you think. I know that's kind of far-fetched, but... It is what it is. This is magic, baby. And it does seem like something along those lines. All right? I'm pumped for ruins. And they're about to drop soon. We'll find out within probably a week or two what a ruin is. Time Spiral Remaster. Yeah, this is not in Chaldeem. Okay? This is one of the promos. It's a Lotus Bloom. They are doing Time Spiral Remastered. That's right. This is going to be dropping, like, I think three months from now. Um, which is really cool because they have had, uh, like, Time Spiral back in the day. Basically, it was a, um, they came out with a set where you'd get these time kind of cards, you know, or whatever. They were the purple, and it was a card printed from earlier days of Magic. You know, some of them uh, worth a pretty, pretty penny, you know. Um, but they had the little hourglass symbol on them. Now they tilted the hourglass a little bit. They got rid of the whole purple thing, because I didn't, I don't know why they made it purple, you know, but they did. I guess that was to stand out, that it's a time-shifted card or whatever. But, um, yeah, Lotus Bloom, cool card. Uh, Christopher Rush, rest in peace, man. Uh, just amazing artist all around. Um, yeah, the person, he's the guy who, uh, originally did, 
um, the the Lotus, the OG Lotus. Yeah, that was uh, all Christopher Rush's art on that. So this is uh, really, really sweet that they got this card coming back, um, getting the reprint. But again, it's the promo version, okay? So I'm pumped. We're going to see a lot of older stuff printed in this upcoming set. And um, card number 411. It's going to be exciting. There's going to be like probably 500 cards in this uh, Time Spiral Remastered set. So that's insanity. Ruins, man. I hope my explanation did not make you guys go, what the heck is he talking about? But... Uh, yeah, I think it's gonna be something along those lines. I'm really pumped, man. It's looking like my friend's angels, which you guys know I love my angel tribes and my dragons. Uh, and I hope we see another sweet dragon, too. Um, they're gonna get some love and support. If you enjoyed the video, by all means, leave a like. I do appreciate it. And uh, check out the other videos right after this. Skadoosh. Or, like, look around. They're there. Skadoosh.